Okay, let's talk about how you calculate the amount of product to be produced when there are limiting reactants to be considered. Uh, what that means, well, this is something you'll see every time with questions like this where it tells you how much of each reactant is there. If it tells you you have a certain amount of this reactant and a certain amount of this reactant, um, you need to be able to figure out how much product is going to be made based on whichever reactant is the limiting reactant, whichever one runs out first. Now, the thing about this is, there is nothing here to tell you which reactant is the limiting reactant. All this question is saying that if you have 50.0 grams of this reactant and, let make that clearly a decimal point, 50.0 grams of this reactant, how many grams of this reactant are you going to get? Well, since there's nothing here to tell you whether this is limiting or this is limiting, you're going to do two calculations, one for this reactant and one for this one, and then take the smaller of the two answers, and that will be how much product you expect to get. All right, well, let's do that. So we'll have one calculation be based on 50.0 grams of ammonia NH3, and I'll set up the brackets for doing that calculation. That should be enough. And then uh, 50.0 grams of sodium metal. Oops, let's make that sodium metal. All right, now uh, in order to do this, first of all, I need to be careful, care careful and clear about what I'm calculating. I'm trying to find how many grams of uh, this product here in each case. Now let's see, is that in view for you, the viewer? Uh, all right, there we go. So, ensuring that we get the right amount, let's see, I'll do two calculations and find out which one gives a smaller amount produced and that's what I'm gonna take. So, let's see. What I'll need to do is take grams of what I'm given, convert to moles of what I'm given here. From here I'll go from moles of what I've given to moles of what I want, and here from moles of what I want to grams of what I want for the final answer. So, that means, given that I'm starting out with grams of these things, let's convert this to moles. So that's going to be, uh, let's see, 14.01 plus three times the mass of hydrogen. Okay, that's the molar mass of the ammonia. We'll just put that down as 17.03, because molar masses, you don't let them go out beyond the hundredths place generally. Um, so 17.03 grams of NH3 for every one mole of NH3. Written like this because grams of ammonia is not part of the final answer. I need to make sure it cancels out. So I have moles of ammonia and grams of ammonia. Now how do I know to put the moles on top and the grams on bottom? Because I need grams of ammonia to cancel out with grams of ammonia. Think of this as like units, where grams of ammonia on top cancels grams of ammonia on bottom. That's how I know I put it together right. So now I have moles of ammonia, okay? Well, I need to find a ratio of moles for it here in the equation, which means I need to balance the equation. Honestly, I should have done that first at the beginning. Um, so, let's see. Balancing this equation, there is three hydrogens, two hydrogens, and two more. One sodium, one sodium, one nitrogen, one nitrogen. So, let's do this. Put a two here, which forces me to have two of these and two of these. And then two nitrogens, two nitrogens, six hydrogens, that's four hydrogens plus two more, six, two sodiums, two sodiums. All right, it's working. Anyway, the reason why I needed to make sure I had that balanced was for what comes next. So I take the grams of what I'm given, okay, because it says I start with 50 grams of each reactant, there we are, um, converted to moles, okay? Now, I need to go from moles of this to moles of what I'm trying to find. And according to the equation, for every two moles of ammonia, there's two moles of what I'm trying to find. So I take that straight out of the equation. Two moles of ammonia 
for every two moles of what I'm trying to find, this uh, NaNH2. And then uh, at the end, here, I don't, well, let's see, what have I got so far? Grams of ammonia cancels grams of ammonia. Moles of ammonia cancels moles of ammonia. Now I need something to cancel out moles of this, so I'm going to put one mole NaNH2. How did I know that? Because here I need the molar mass, because if I cancel everything out, I'm left with moles of this stuff, but my final answer needs to be grams, which means converting this to moles. So I convert this to moles by putting the molar mass in this final one. So it turns out the molar mass of this stuff is 39.02 grams per mole. NaNH2. Oops, ran out of space there, but the um, point is, okay, so I've used the molar mass to go from moles of this stuff to grams of this stuff. So from, so basically the pattern is if I start with grams and go to grams, I convert from grams to moles, from moles of one to moles of the other, and then from moles of the other to grams of the other. And, uh, well, okay, I'll do that calculation in a bit, but let's set up the other one too. Sodium, all right, well, one mole of sodium is a uh, 22.99 grams of sodium metal. And then for every uh, two moles of sodium, which is what I have, I'm trying to find this, there are two moles of product. And then uh, for every, uh, let's see, now I've got moles of product, one from moles of so grams of sodium to moles of sodium, from moles of sodium to moles of product, from moles of product, I'll go to grams of product using the molar mass, which means one mole of this product, NaNH2, has a molar mass of, let's see, what did I look up, uh, 39.02 grams, NaNH2. That's the setup. So now I simply go through and calculate what it is that the mass is going to be. So let's see what I've got here. Let's scoot this out of the way so you can see the calculator at work and that way I can also put in a rule, a, a word about significant figures. Uh, let's see, 50 divided by 17.03 times two divided by two. I just did that for the sake of pointing out that you, you want to do everything if it looks obvious. And then times 39. 0.02. Okay, uh, that's the raw calculator output. 114.5625, blah, blah, blah. Uh, four sig figs, infinite sig figs, infinite sig figs, four sig figs, three sig figs. So I ran to three significant figures, 115 grams of product. Okay, same thing for the bottom one. Let's have a look. By the way, I can tell already it's going to be three significant figures because there's four, there's four, and these are all infinite significant figures here like this bit, because it's like exactly two moles, or exactly one mole has that much mass, etc. Um, so 50 divided by 22.99 times 2 divided by 2 times 39.02. That's uh, 84.9 grams of the product. So. There we go, I now have two numbers, and I'm gonna do this. I'm going to say, since the question is asking what's the limiting reactant and how much, how much product is made, I can do those both right now. And the way I do that is by choosing the smaller final answer. I'm going to say this is the amount of product I'd expect to make. Amount of product expected and then the reactant which led to that will be the limiting reactant okay so that's what this will be right here limiting reactant Now, of course, if that's the limiting reactant, then whatever the other reactant is in the equation, the ammonia, is the excess reactant. Excess reactant. 
I know the question didn't specifically ask for it, but I do want to make, make sure to point that out. Okay, and so thus it is that by doing the two calculations, you can figure out not, how much, not only how much is actually going to be made, but you can go back and determine um, the limiting and excess reactants. Now, um, let me give you a couple more questions to practice with. Okay, so um, I just now worked out this question. What I'd like you to do is try these questions out. In a little bit, I'll put these up and you can see these answers and how they compare to what you have. Okay, so press pause on the video now. And then once you're ready, here come the answers. Okay, so for that part B, first of all, if you solved it correctly, you've got something that looks like this, where I have identified this is the excess reactant because it made more, and this is the limiting reactant because it made less. So that's the amount I would expect to be produced by this. Okay, next question. Question C, this one, here it comes. If you solved it correctly, you got something like this where uh, once again, here is your excess reactant because it makes more, your limiting reactant because it makes less. And uh, of course, then the small amount is the amount we'd expect to be produced. And finally, question D right there. Here's the answer to question D. Note, by the way, that I have balanced the equation. I use that balanced equation to find what uh, the ratio between the moles is of the different substances. I have identified this is the limiting reactant because it produces less product, and this is the excess reactant because it could produce more. All right, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Happy studies.